All right, everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to The King's Speech. Uh, so just finished recording my uh, Shonen Jump reaction review stuff. So we'll do a quick TLDR channel update stuff uh, before we dive into the next volume of Dawn of the Dawn here. Uh, so like I mentioned, the Shonen Jump videos that just went up, I've been sick the last couple of weeks. Uh, so that's why I've been kind of MIA from the channel and haven't been putting out content. Uh, but I've been feeling a little bit better this weekend. Uh, so playing a little bit of catch up. Uh, my throat has been kind of aggravating me on and off a little bit through this recording. Uh, so we're going to try to attempt to at least get through one volume of Yorn of the Dawn. Uh, if I can, if my throat can stand, I'm going to try to get through at least two today. Uh, but if not, expect to uh, get back to kind of what I was doing before, which is about two, three volumes a week starting next week. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, apart from that, there's also a couple other series uh, that I'm going to get back to now that uh, my holds are finally coming in. Uh, so yeah, February is going to be a pretty packed month. It's going to be good for read-throughs and stuff. Uh, so if you haven't already, consider you know like, commenting, subscribing uh, to the channel. Because uh, like I said, I'm going to be more consistent with content creation uh, this year. And YouTube's algorithm really loves it uh, when people push all those little buttons uh, on the channel. Uh, so if you haven't already, if you like my content, please do consider doing that. Because uh, it helps me out a lot. Uh, so without further ado, let us dive into it with uh, Yona of the Dawn, Volume 27. Uh, with story and art by Mizuho Kusanagi. And I have to admit, I'm interested... And where the stuff is going from here after Huck's impromptu confession last in the last volume. Uh, so let's get to it with chapter 153, A Rare Sunny Day. And you see Jayha greeting Yona with a morning, Yona. It's like, good morning. It's like, did you sleep well? She's just like blushing, shaking her head. He's like, ha <laughs> It's like, no surprise. It's like, I'm still reeling a bit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, laughing is just too dangerous for me. Oh. Uh, but you see Huck just conked out peacefully in the tent. No worries at all. As uh, Yona and Jayha are just peeking in on him a little bit. Yona's like, I'm still reeling a bit. And Jayha's like, meanwhile, the guy who unburdened himself ate well and went to bed. And uh, as they're outside, Jayha's like, hi, Huck. And you see Yona's going like, th thump. And he's like, morning. He's like, hey. As he walks out. And Yona's like, uh, good morning. He's like, good morning. <laughs> and she's just looking all embarrassed and blushing. And Jayha just kind of goes and gives her a hug from behind. He's like, Huck, did you sleep well? And Huck's like, yeah, haven't slept that well in ages. And he just kind of shuffles off like a zombie. Jayha's like, I was going to tease him about yesterday, but he seems unfazed. He's used to his love being unrequited. He wouldn't have stayed at Yona's side for all these years if this were enough to get a rise out of him. And Jayha just kind of pats her on the head as he leaves. And you see uh, uh, Zeno and... Not Zeno. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, Gija and uh, Sinha greeting him with a huck. He's like, huh? It's like, look what Sinha made. And you see him carving out a wooden arrowhead. And uh, Huck's like, oh, wooden arrowhead? He's like, oh, hey, perfect fit. He's like, to use for now. He's like, Yona said she used up her arrows. And he's like, this is nice work. And Sinha's like, at my village, I crafted weapons in case of intruders. And uh, Hawk's like, thanks. I'll see if I can make an arrow with this. <laughs> and you see Sinha's just like all happy with the praises, carving up more arrowheads. As uh, Gita brings up like a giant piece of lumber. He's like, hey, I found some hardwood. And you see a shik shik as Yona's also carving up uh, some arrows as well. She's sitting there, just getting more embarrassed, thinking about Huck's confession. And he comes up next to her, whispers, Princess, and she freaks out with an, ah! He's like, you okay there? And she's like, yeah. And as he helps her up, she sees that she's blushing even more. He just, like, lunges at her with a whoosh. She, like, flinches back, and he's like, this is kind of fun. It's like, Sinha made you an arrowhead. He's like, what? He's like, wow, that's amazing. It's like, he's skilled. And Huck's like, so, what's this supposed to be? Is it a burdock root? And she's like, it's an arrow shaft. He's like, should we add it to the pot tonight? He's like, still not funny. It's like, Sinha's so multi-talented. He's a good swordsman. I wonder if he's an archer too. And Huck's like, he's handled everything life's thrown at him on his own. I could learn a lot of things from him. And he's like, feel like training? It's been a while. 
And you see a clack clack as she and Huck start doing a little uh, sword sword uh, dueling practice. And uh, God, why am I so bad with names? Uh, you and Pretty Boy. It's like last night he was proclaiming his love, and now he's swinging a wooden sword at her. And Jay Ha's like he shows love in peculiar ways, but it's still much better than him being so gloomy. Yeah, what's the matter, your highness? Did you wear yourself fighting in Shing? He's like, come on, come at me. <laughs> and uh, Yona's like, I can't concentrate at all after what happened yesterday. And he's like, if this is the best you can do, it's not safe for you to carry a sword. And she's like, Huck, you don't usually use this much strength against me. And he's like, that's not it. You've gotten weak. And she just gets mad and she just slashes the sword around him and just stops right below his throat. He's like, hey, there, there's my cool princess. And she's like, really? And he just starts laughing. He's like, why are you laughing? He's like, that was just hilariously unsexy. It's like, we're training. I don't need to be sexy. It's like, yeah, you don't need to be. No one wants to marry you anyway. He's like, did I completely dream up what happened yesterday? He's like, well, I wouldn't mind marrying you. And as she starts blushing again, he's like, I'm kidding. He's like, I couldn't ask my leash to marry me. <laughs> Yona was like, were you kidding when? It's like, you mean when I said yesterday? I was dead serious. She starts blushing again and Hawk's just watching her. He's like, I could watch this forever. She's like, how, how long have you? It's like, I don't remember how it happened. I don't even know when I became so hopeless. I can't pin down the moment. She's like, Huck, um, I, I... It's like, listen, please don't worry about it. I don't have any expectations here, right? <laughs> this dumbass meathead. <laughs> so clueless. Oh my god, he's so dumb. It's like, I just figured I should get it out in the open. It was in the heat of the moment. And Yona's like, huh? It's like, I don't want it to stress you. He's like, um, it's like, it's all good. He's like, I, he's like, training's over. Time to eat. He just strolls away like... Completely oblivious to everything. And you see later that night as Jay Ha's wrapped up in a blanket next to the fire. Hawk comes over and is like, hey droopy eyes, I'll stand watch for you. I got plenty of sleep yesterday. He's like, ah Hawk, that's kind of you, but why don't you spend some time with Yona? And he's like, she keeps averting her eyes when I'm around. She was having a fun chat with Yuan, so I think she's doing better. And he pours himself a drink, him and himself and Jay Ha a drink. And uh, Jay Ha's like, she's just nervous. I think it's adorable. He's like, it is cute, but he's like, you were so defiant. How do you feel now after letting out feelings you've been hiding for years? And Huck's like, to be honest, I never planned to say anything. It's like, not even in the palace? It's like, especially not back then. You can't just tell a princess, hey, I'm in love with you and expect it to go well. At some point, I stopped wanting to her to see me that way or imagining us being together. And Jay Ho's like, he squashed his feelings down so much he feels at peace with it. He's like, but it's weird. After I told her, I felt relieved. I guess I'd been wanting to say it. And Jay Ho's like, let's drink to that, Huck. It's like, right now, you guys are here and her highness seems to be feeling pretty secure. So no matter what I say, it probably won't shake her. And Jay Ho's thinking, actually, I'd say this has caused major upheaval in our daily lives. He's like, I don't really understand her highness. That was supposed to be a farewell gesture. He's thinking back to Yona kissing him. He's like, maybe I should give her a farewell gesture too. He's like, a what? It's like, nothing. And Jay Ha's like, by the way, Yona said you had something you wanted to tell her, but then you wouldn't say what it was. What's the story? And Hawk's just silent as Jay Ha's like, huh? It wasn't about love? It's like, that doesn't matter anymore. It's like, during the confusion in Shing, I wasn't in my right mind. He's like, how so? It's like her highness let go of her hairpin. She offered it in exchange for help from that informant. I was thinking of asking her if she wanted to get it back. And Jay was like, do you want her to get it back? And he's like, I think it's good that she let it go. If it means that she started to heal a little bit after that horrible night and that she can move forward. I don't really know how I feel about it. That hairpin was a memento to her. But I still haven't let go. And uh, Jay was thinking, when Huck was at the palace, he dedicated himself to serving Yona. Likewise, he made the decision to serve Suwon for the rest of his life. 
Hawk is still snared in the darkness of betrayal cast over him. Yona, you're probably the only one who can save him. Yona, oh, you can go to bed now. It's like, actually, I'll stick around a bit longer. <laughs> As we get to chapter 154, Concerns. And you have uh, Yona going, huh? You want to go to Kuto? And Zeno's like, yep. It's like, it's unusual for you to suggest a destination. It's like, you three still feel sluggish, right? It's like, it's true. I'm not feeling my best. And Zeno's like, being near Hiryu Palace will take care of that. And Yun's like, uh, I'm still trying to get my head around this. Why does being near the palace restore the dragon warriors? And he goes, Zeno explains, the dragon gods gave Hiryu Palace a powerful blessing. There's a mausoleum inside consecrated to the crimson dragon's king's soul. It's like, right, young lady? And Yon was like, huh? Yes. It's like, back when the priests were being driven out, the mausoleum was in danger. But even you, Han, couldn't lay a finger on the mausoleum of the crimson dragon king. And uh, Gijo's like, so you're saying it has the power to heal us? It's like, right. It's like, huh? Hold on. Does that mean we're going all the way to the palace? And Zeno's like, no, no. Being somewhere near Kuto will do fine. And Yona's like, that mausoleum. My father used to take me there quite often. And Yona's like, what was it? And uh, Gijo's like, what was it like? It's like, it was dedicated to a spirit, but it wasn't scary at all. I always sensed a kind of warmth from it, oddly. When I was little, I loved playing there. Come to think of it, one time I took Suwon there with me. And you see, as he's trying to do that, you see ba uh, baby Suwon being held back by King Il, who says, you are forbidden from entering this place. And uh, as Yona's like, kind of lost in thought, uh, Yun's like, Yona? He's like, oh, uh, nothing. It's like, I want everyone to get better quickly, so I'm in favor of going there. It's like, then it's decided. Let's head out tomorrow. And she thinks, that's a pretty old memory. Father almost never got angry. I didn't expect him to say such a thing. When Suwon was scolded and I wasn't, I was so sad. But Suwon didn't seem to resent it. He never went near the mausoleum again. I wonder why father refused to let him go in. And you see a fump the next day as Jonah as a parent thing, washing, uh, taking the bedding to be washed. So walking while carrying all this cloth is tricky. These are the, they're the tents, the floor coverings, warm clothing. And you have an eep! <laughs> she bumps into Hawk. It's like, I'm sorry. It's like, oh! And she's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. She throws all the clothing off. And like, Hawk? It's like, I'm surprised you can carry all this weight. It's like, your arms are like sticks. It's like, and here you're tending to your wounds too. It's like, did it hurt you? He's like, no. It's like, what is it? It's like, I want to rewrap them. Your bandages. He's like, sure, if you want. It's like, do you enjoy that stuff? Yeah, she's like, wrapping up his arm wound. She's like, oh, I was... Well, uh, I wish going near Kuto would heal the Dark Dragon too. And uh, as he grabs her arms, like, Hawk, if you do that, I can't rap. He's like, I think I'll do it myself. He's like, what? It's like, did I do it badly? He's like, no. It's just that if you touch me so much, I may not stop at holding your hand. <laughs> and he slowly brings her in closer and he's just getting beat red. He's like, oh, the bandages fell. And you see, back at Kuto Palace Town... Uh, back at Ogi's bar, you have Ogi. Hey, Ogi. It's like, uh. it's like, you sure seem glum lately. It's like, can't say I blame you. It's like, leave me alone, will ya? It's like, you don't have time to mope. Haven't you heard the rumors flying around Kuto? After the peace summit that just went down, everyone's talking about how Princess Yona, when no one, everyone's talking about how Princess Yona, who no one's seen since she vanished from Hiryu Palace, was instrumental in solving things without bloodshed. It was like, we already knew that much, but now people are saying that the legend of the four dragon warriors might actually be true. They were at Princess Yona's side when she descended upon Shing. And Ogi's like, descended upon? It's like, apparently her red hair symbolizes the Crimson Dragon King or something. Anyway, the rumors correspond with the sight sightings during the battle with the Fire Tribe and the drug problems in the Water Tribe. You should get back in touch with the real source of all this. I bet you'd pick up a lot of valuable information... And uh, one of his informants goes, Ogi, the person you're waiting for is here. And he wakes up with a jolt as Riri comes in and goes, Hi, Ogi, how you been? And he just slumps back over like, You? I wasn't waiting for you. Like, That's just rude. It's like, What's going on? Who are you expecting? It's like, Not that important. And she's like, Huh, isn't that hairpin better suited to a young lady? It's like, You're into that? It's like, Actually, wait, that looks familiar. And she just like grabs his ear and pulls it back with a yank. He's like, Ow! Where'd you get this? He's like, huh? It's like, it was a gift. It suits my hair. It's like, in what world would anyone give a flower hairpin to some scruffy old man? 
He's like a world full of all sorts of people. And Riri's like, there's no way some commoner would have something so expensive. This, this is her hairpin. And he's like, oh, I get it. So you know her highness. And he's like, I guess that's not surprising. You know his majesty after all. And Riri's like, was she here? It's like, yeah, she traded this for my help. It's like, does his majesty know that you helped her? It's like, I served as a go-between, but Juan never showed up. It's like, actually, I doubt he'll ever come here again. And Riri goes, I've invited him to come me come with me several times, but he keeps refusing. And uh, Ogi's uh, grunt is like, haven't there been times when you didn't hear from him for over a year? And he's like, yeah, there have. But this is different. I had the feeling that if I helped Yona, I'd never see him again. I pretended not to know who he really was. But once all this happened, he's like, Princess Yona's a thorn in the current regime's side. It wouldn't be strange at all for me to be killed for helping her. It's like he severed our relationship to protect me. And Riri's like, or else you're not useful to him anymore. He just slams his fist down. He's like, let me have my dream. <coughs> Excuse me. I need a little water. He goes, I know it's the right move for his sake, but I've known him since he was this tall. He's just like thinking about like baby Suwon. He's like, he was such a cheeky, annoying kid. He's all grown up now. Everything interested him, but he never talked about himself. I'm worried about him. And Riri asks, say, do you have a buyer for that hairpin? He's like, not yet. He's like, I'll buy it from you then. And he's like, seriously? He's like, we don't have any money with me right now, so hold on to it for me. I want a small discount too. He's like, I thought you were rich. He's like, what? He's like, in exchange from time to time, I'll tell you how his majesty's doing. Information has a price, right? He's like, yeah, true that. Information requires something of similar value. He's like, all right, I'll hold on to this. He's like, thank you, young lady. And Riri thinks, your majesty, you've done some cruel things for the sake of this nation, but there are still people who love you so much. And you see later at the palace, Riri's like, huh? His majesty? What's he doing? I think that's some kind of like hidden door behind the throne. Is he going down to the mausoleum? You see a creek because he's opened up a door and yet downstairs as he walks into like this weird looking crypt. And as he lights a candle, Riri surprises him going, wow, I had no idea all of this was below the throne room. And he's like, yeah! He's like, Riri? She's like, you're usually so observant, but sometimes you're utterly oblivious. You venture too many, and uh, Suwon's like, you venture too, to too many places without permission. It's like, what a solemn spot. What is it? And he goes, it's a mausoleum that houses the soul of the Crimson Dragon King. It's like, right under the throne room, huh? It's like the Crimson Dragon King. He was like a god to our nation. But how strongly he believed in varies from tribe to tribe. Or how strongly he's believed in varies from tribe to tribe. It's like the water tribe worships the dragon gods, you know. It's like when there were priests in the palace, there were many believers among the sky tribe. And Riri asked, did you come here to pray? He's like, hardly. So then what brought you down here? He's like, I was prevented from entering before, so I wonder what it was like. It's like, this is all it is. And you see him just kind of staring at the uh, little like dragon crest on the back. And you see later at Saika Palace, you have Taejun. Do you have any idea what you've done? A flare from Saika Palace is a signal that the Kai Empire is invaded. We received no such report from the border. And he's like, no, no brother, I saw them. He's like, the Kai Empire is headed this way. It's like, how exactly did you see them? You were in the palace. He's like, one of my men saw them. He's like, all your men do is work the fields. He's like, Hiryu Palace has asked us repeatedly for upgrades on the situation. The flare caused chaos for the Sky Tribe army before their battle with Qing. The Fire Tribe has already lost the other tribe's confidence thanks to Father's Rebellion. If we have yet another scandal, you and I will have to atone for it by slitting our bellies. Saying you thought you saw them but they were wrong or that you shot the flare by mistake won't cut it. <laughs> and Tejun's like, that's exactly what I was thinking of doing. It's like, according to reports, war with Xing was aborted. Princess Yona accomplished her goal. My part in it is finished. It's like, but, but brother, it's like, how do I spin this? It's like, my men work in the fields as cover while they keep an eye out for enemy activity. They're an elite squad maintaining the peace in neighboring areas. They carefully monitor small spots that are easily overlooked but are vulnerable to invasion. It's like, I should stop while my mouth keeps digging me deeper. 
He's like, so tell me where the incursion is happening. He's like, um, it's like just this once, Kai Empire, could you invade just a tiny bit? And you hear General Kyoga. It's like uh, reporting, sir. It's like what is it? A message from the northmost town in our territory. The Kai Empire has crossed the border. Our lands are being invaded. <laughs> Kyoga's like, what? The Kai Empire is invading the Fire Tribe territory. And uh, Tejun's like, all right! It's like, all right! It's like, what do you mean by that, Tejun? He's like, huh? D -d -d Did I say something? It's like, you're stammering, Tejun. It's like, never mind that, brother. We must inform Hiryu Palace immediately. The Kai Empire is invading our nation, and so brazenly this time. And you have, wait, who exactly were we facing? Is it Ri Hazara? And the guard's like, we don't know yet. Taejun's men might have gotten their information wrong. I'll verify it personally. He's like, brother! You see, chapter 155, Truth from Lies. We have an Oz. You have a small hot spring resort near Kuto. And Jay was like, ah, I feel alive again. It's like the pain from my injuries is fading. It's like, so you're recovering? It's like, yes, I can feel my strength coming back. I can't tell anymore if it's because of Hiryu Palace or the hot water. And you see, Sinha soaked earlier and is keeping watch. He's like, oh, my body feels lighter. And Hawk's like, the Dark Dragon's all better too. And Yun's like, it's all in your head. It's like, I know Dr. Yun told me not to get hot water on my arrow wound, but my left arm's freezing. And he's like, I'll rub it with a warm cloth later. It's like, I'd like to visit the mausoleum of the Crimson Dragon King at least once. And you see, well, Zeno's had enough. Zeno will check in on the young lady. <laughs> it's like the women's bath is next door. All the dragons are just staring at him in surprise. It's like, Zeno's personality is quite advantageous to him. And you see a tak 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 as Zeno's running outside. And Sinha's outside goes, someone's coming. It's like, huh? It's like, Describe them. It's like he's not carrying a weapon. He's undressing here to bathe. It's like, so it's a guest. It's like another guest, huh? We won't be able to leave for a while. And uh, Kijo's like, you can hide behind me then. It's like, you shouldn't have your hand out where anyone can see it either. And you see Ogi coming in to the resort. And he sees the dragons, he just slams the door and goes back into the dressing room. And Hawk's like, Sinha, grab him, will you? It's like, that guy? Why? And he's like, hands off, what's with you? Yun's like, who is he? It's like, anyone with him, Sinha? And he just shakes his head no. He's like, I'm alone, what do you think you're doing? And Hawk's like, you helped us just recently, thanks. So why'd you run away? What brings you here? And Ogi's like, look at yourselves, who wouldn't run? What are you doing here? It's like, I'm meeting someone. It's like, Suwon? It's like, no, another informant. I haven't seen Wan in a while. I doubt I'll see him again. So you don't have to worry that I'll tell him anything about you. And Jay has like, Huck, is this the informant who helped you? He's like, yeah. And Ogi's just glancing at them. He's like, could these be the four dragon warriors everyone's been talking about? And you see he's, he does arm and he's like, scales? I figured the stories are exaggerated, but this is... And you see Ogi's informant walking in, seeing the scenario, situation, just walking out again. He's like, am I in the wrong place? He's like, hey, wait, I'm right here. You have Ogi and his friend move to the higher bath. As his informant's like, who are they? It's like, some travelers who were there before me. We chatted some. It's like, really? Okay, then. It's like, I have big news from a fire tribe contact. He's like, yeah? It's like, the territory's been invaded by the Kai Empire, apparently. And you see you just popping his head up with a, do you have details? It's like, you're not part of this conversation, boy. And Ogi's like, eh, it's fine. This isn't top secret info. And you see the dragons are still just all down below, just trying to like eavesdrop. And Yun's like, so, is it true? It's like, the thing is, Saika Palace had already sent up a flare to request reinforcements from Hiryu Palace. But for some reason, Hiryu Palace just sat back and watched. There hasn't been another flare, so I'm not sure it's reliable news. And Ogi's like, I can tell you why they sent up the flare. It's like, huh, you can? It's going to cost you. It's like, forget it. It's like, what on earth's happening in the fire tribe lands? And you hear a knock knock as uh, Zeno's checking in on Yona. It's like, young lady, hello? She's like, Zeno? It's like, come on in. Are the others feeling better? He's like, yep, they say their pain has eased. It's like, that's a relief. All because of Hiryu Palace, huh? It's like, it's strange. All my life, my father told me legends about the Crimson Dragon King. He was a god, an intangible entity. Every morning, my father prayed to him in the mausoleum. Zeno, what was the Crimson Dragon King really like? 
And he's like, I can't say for sure. She's like, what? It's like, he's a distant memory. It's like, so you don't remember? And he's like, I don't know whether I've forgotten or whether my experiences have colored what I thought I knew. Looking at you makes me think of him. He was kind to us and kind to his people. He was soft-spoken and charming. But it could be that the four dragons were a burden to him. I keep wondering. I'm just like, why? It's like the dragon gods created the dragon warriors out of their overwhelming love for the Crimson Dragon. But that's not something the Crimson Dragon King ever asked for. Neona's like, Zeno, were you with him in his final days? He's like, uh-huh. He fell ill and died while all four of us still lived. It's like, it must have been so painful for him to leave you four behind. It's like, Zeno, maybe the reason his mausoleum can heal the dragon warriors is because he wanted you all to be well. He wanted to protect you from within Hiryu Palace even after he passed away. And he's like, maybe. And you see later as they're uh, all outside, it's like, what? The Kai Empire's invaded the Fire Tribe? It's like, well, we still don't know if it's true. I went there and asked Heijun to distract Suwon and slow the Sky Tribe Army's advance. It's like, right, you did all that for us and for Shing. I guess this means they're really under attack now. And Yun's like, but they haven't sent up a flare this time. Maybe they're handling it fine on their own. And you're like, let's go, your highness. <coughs> Excuse me. That man did all he could to help us when we were in prison and prevent war with Shing. If we go there, perhaps we'll be able to do something. And Jay Hall's like, maybe we'll we'll make up for being helpless in Shing. It's like, we've got to thank that rich boy. And Ogi's like, if you're going to the fire tribe, we'll lend you horses. And Yona's like, thank you. It's like, as an informant, I need to verify whether these really are the four legendary dragons. And you see in fire tribe lands, Kyoga going, can you explain this, Taejun? Are you saying you saw this coming before anyone else? And Taejun's just pretending to be like, all confidence, like, hey, as I kept telling you, brother, there's an army on our tribe's doorstep. And you see a zoom, and you see, like, a dust cloud from this army just marching. And Kyoga goes, uh, says, send up another flare to inform Hiryu Palace. Summon reinforcements from Saika Palace. You have, yes, sir. It's like, we have to hold this ground. It took an entire day to get here with these troops. Will the soldiers we bought be able to hold out until reinforcements arrive from Saika Palace? King Suwon, I can't betray his trust in me. And he goes, I'm sorry I doubted you, Tadron. All that matters and he's like, All that matters is that you know now, brother. He's like, I'll be leading the troops here to hold off the invasion. And he goes, Stand fast. He's like, You're coming too. He's like, What? It's like I see now that you and your men are quite shrewd and excel at your jobs. That means you won't be easily taken down in battle. He's like, but we'll fall eventually. And Hook Chi's like, Let's go, Lord Tadron. He's like, Hook Chi? Everyone's furious that the fields they worked so hard to cultivate have been invaded. And you see his men just like all these farm implements just like glaring at him. He's like, no, my men have utterly transformed into simple farmers. He's like, whose fault is that? And Kyoga goes, Taejun, do you remember our father's rebellion? Even now I dream that I ran out to stop his army. And he thinks back to him like charging through the, the forces going, don't falter, charging formation. It's like, use flames to make these villains regret the day they defiled this holy land of fire. And you hear, General Kyoga, we must retreat. They outnumber us too greatly. It's like, hold out until reinforcements come from Saika Palace. I don't know if this is a flashback or if this is him in the Kai Empire. It's kind of a weird transition. It's like, hold out until reinforcements come from Saika Palace. We can't allow this land to be invaded a second time. And your Lord Tadron, please stand back. I'm, it's like, I'm already standing back, as far as I can. And you see soldiers just coming towards him. And he's like, Hukchi, how do you stop something from flying right at you? It's like, I couldn't say. And you see one of the soldiers, like, one of the invading forces, like, uh, about to launch a spear at him. And Hukchi, like, stands in front, ready to defend him. And you hear, ah! And a foo and a thud as an arrow takes him out of the uh, saddle. Yeah, that was a very odd transition, like, right into the battle from him talking to Taejun. That was weird. I don't know why it was structured like that. Uh, and you see Yona standing up over the hilltops nearby, having taken out the uh, soldier on horseback. 
As you have chapter 156, there's no way I'm losing it. And Tadra's like, Princess Yona! And Gidra's like, Your Highness, the Fire Tribe is being overwhelmed! And he's like, We haven't fought on Fire Tribe land since our time was the Tarp Dragon and the Happy Hungry Bunch. It's like, Yes, we're back in action. And he's skiff as Yona notches another arrow. He's like, Lord Tadra! And you have a huh? And a gah! As you see one of the Kai Empire guys like trying to wield his axe down on him. And Huck comes in with his glaive and slashes him down. He's like, Lord Tajun, letting yourself be distracted is dangerous. He's like, Thunder Beast! He's like, but if you want to go to the afterlife, I can take off. He's like, farewell. He tries to walk off. And Tajun's like, no, no need for that, Thunder Beast. Stay here, okay? Please? And you see all the soldiers muttering, like, that's a Thunder Beast. And he's like, ha! And you see another uh, cavalry guy charging at them. And Huck's like, oh? He's like, stay out of glaive range then. And you see... Uh, Tejun and his forces are also surrounded by Kai soldiers. He's like, don't give up. We survived General Sujin's battle. We'll get through this, too. We'll go. And you see the soldier that was uh, back to back with him gets shot in the throat with an arrow. He's like, God, Crimson Dragon King, someone! And you see a guy as uh, Kija comes to the rescue and slashes all of them down. Do you have a what? And an eek! As he grabs one of the soldiers and just tosses him. Like, what just happened? It's like, that's... It's like, what's wrong? It's like, not sure, some kind of monster. And you see, yeah, it's more of the Kai soldier empires gonna like get this Jaha just like bounces off their heads with his leg. And like he he's flying, he's like, shoot him down! And you see Sinha then going into the fray as well. And Kyoga's like, stay in formation! And you hear a general, we should retreat. As you see more of his men getting cut down. It's like General Kyoga! It's like it'll be a while before reinforcements from Psycho Palace can reach us. Meanwhile, we're badly outnumbered. I can't afford to lose King Suwon's trust. Like, to my great regret, he sees a thum, and a thum as these Kai soldiers are just being blown back. He's like, what's happening? The enemy's being blasted away? And you see the dragon warriors just all just blowing away swaths of the Kai Empire soldiers. He's like, who are those people? And you see a gah as one of the guys gets shot with an arrow. It's like an arrow from above? It's like a woman. It's like, who are they? Why are they helping us? Why do some of them look so strange? I almost think they're... You have General Kyoga, look! The enemy is withdrawing! He's like, now's our chance! Everyone attack at once! Advance! It's like, they're withdrawing? It's like, those people with strange power saved us! Like, red hair? It's like, they're heading back to the Kai Empire! It's like, did we win? And you see a foo! And you see Ogi just watching all this going, This is impossible! The four dragon warriors have that kind of power? I've never seen anything like it. And you see, Ogi the informant came to verify the rumors. So ever since I first saw Princess Yona, I suspected she might be the red-haired girl with the legendary dragons. But it appears the dragon's powers are a reality too. And yeah, the Kai soldiers are withdrawing. It's like, we should leave too. And Zeno's like, young lady, the second son of the fire tribe looked as if he wanted to speak with us. And Ogi's like, if you're leaving, hurry and mount up. Yon's like, hold on, Jeha and the others are surrounded by fire tribe soldiers. So what should we do? It's like, I can't kick him away. And Huck's like, all right, everyone up. Up on Droopy Eyes' back. It's like, okay. It's like, don't listen to him. Do you have four dragons? It's like, huh? It's like, you are the bladed white dragon, the green dragon who soars to the sky, and the blindfolded blue dragon. It's like, and you're, um, and he's, Huck's just like the dark dragon, the shining blade of darkness. It's like, don't make stuff up. It's like, I knew it. It's like, don't believe him. Are you the four legendary dragons who are set to appear on the battlefield? And Yun's like, they seem to be acting strange. And Ogi's like, rumors of the four legendary dragons and a red-headed girl appearing on the battlefield have spread all over the place. Do you know what? It's like the fire tribe has been especially keen to find them. And you see a make way, clear a path as Kyoga's coming in. It's like, you there. I must thank you for saving the fire tribe from being invaded by another nation. But Why? And he spots Huck and he goes, Aren't you Son Huck, former general of the Wind Tribe? And that general Son Huck is a thunder beast? And he's like, why? Then, is it possible that the red-haired girl over there is Princess Yona? What's happening here? I was told they both died. Does King Suan know about this? He's like, whatever the case, I must inform him. And Kyoga goes, I have questions for you. I want you to accompany us to Saika Palace. And Huck's like, thanks for the invite, but we'll pass. Shouldn't you focus on the Kai Empire rather than dealing with us? 
If I fully intend to do both, there are too many unanswered questions here. We'll take you to Saika Palace and then you hand and then hand you over to the king. If you refuse, I can't guarantee that red-haired girl's safety. And Huck's like, if you try to touch her, I'll cut your head off before you even see me move. And Tadrian interrupts with, brother, don't do this! It's like, Tadrian, do you care to explain? Didn't you personally report that Princess Yona and General Huck had died? He's like, they uh, miraculously came back to life? He's like, I don't want you laying a hand on the princess or her companions. Princess Yona helped our people and lands rebuild when things were so dire. It's like, I see. It's like, now she saved our tribe. Therefore, it's like, why don't you inform me that her highness, why didn't you inform me that her highness is still alive? It's like, you've clearly been in contact with them for some time now, and you kept it from me. He's like, yes, that's true, but I haven't betrayed you in any way. It's like, have you forgotten what our father did? I've chosen to devote my life to serving King Suwon to protect the Fire Tribe. I must be worthy of his trust. So the moment you kept this a secret, you did betray me. If you, and then Tadrian goes, if you wish to call this a betrayal, then so be it. It was Princess Yona who set me on the right path. I don't care what anyone says, even if it's you, brother. I won't permit any harm to come to her. And he goes, Tadrian, if I were to collapse right now, you would be chief of our tribe. Are you trying to destroy the Fire Tribe's future by siding with Princess Yona? And you see you calling out, hey, Yona! And she just slides down the cliff towards them. It's like, your highness, like, Princess Yona! Like, look, red hair! And uh, she goes, we met once at a ceremony, didn't we, General Kyoga? And he's like, Princess Yona seems different now. It's like, Suwon is perfectly aware that we're alive. If he wanted us dead, he could have killed us at any time. You don't have to worry. And Kyoga's like, the carefree little princess with her trinkets... And you hear red hair and the four dragon warriors just like in the legends. It's like red hair and dragon warriors. It's like people couldn't stop talking about it after our previous battles. And you see Sujin's rebellion. And now I've seen it with my own eyes. Four legendary dragons and a red haired princess of royal descent have saved the fire tribe. Just like when the heaven sent us the crimson dragon king. Is it the crimson dragon king? It's like utter nonsense. There is no crimson dragon king. It's like everything father said was a fantasy. It's like, but General, you must have seen it. Their powers truly are divine. Wouldn't laying a hand on them be tantamount to blasphemy against the gods? And Yun's like, something incredible is happening. Up until now, we've been treated as monsters. What's changed? Zeno's like, the Fire Tribe's faith in the Crimson Dragon King has always been strong. They can't contain their excitement have, over having gods on their side. And Ogi's like, but the problem won't go away even if people decide the princess is the Crimson Dragon King because of her red hair. The Crimson Dragon King founded this nation was an incarnated god. The four dragon warriors were his heavenly servants. King Suwon doesn't possess any such divine power. If word of this spreads, Princess Yona may become a bigger nuisance than the palace can overlook. Now chapter 157, a longing not easily abandoned. And Ogi calls out, what's your next move? Your friends are stuck down there. And Yun just sees like all the wounded fire tribe soldiers and he takes off down the hill and is like huh what are you doing he's like hey and Yuna's is like yun he's like you can all talk later there's soldiers dying all over the place he's like huh is that yun it's like they're your comrades right if we treat them quickly enough some of them might make it it's like all right let's move it's like yes sir and you see tajun just running off with his soldiers like bring the medical equipment it's like tajun get back here you see even yona running off <coughs> excuse me He's like, stop! He's like, princess! He's like, not now! And he's like, not now? He's like, we're setting up a field infirmary. Can you stand? He's like, uh, no, I can't. He's like, I'll carry you. And you see, ah, the claws of the dragon! He's like, you just trying to reach out. He's like, huh? What's wrong? It's like, your claws are freaking him out. It's like, I'm not going to attack you if you'll just let me lift you. And the soldier's just screaming, ah, it's real! He's like, calm down, will you? And you see, he's like, accidentally, like, harming him more. He's like, all right, I'll carry the most seriously injured first. Raise your hand if that's you. He's like, are you really the dragon warriors, the four legendary dragons? It's like, yeah, I'll shake your hand later. It's like, I had no idea the dark dragon was one of the four. I'm so sorry for my ignorance. And Hawk's like, don't sweat it. I'm a recent addition. And Gee does like, you aren't added in at all. And Yona's like, how are you? He's like, huh? So like, she's Princess Yona? So you can lean on me. He's like, I, I never... <laughs> Nizzy Tajan is coming running in to grab him and says, No, 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 your highness. I, King Tajan, will take care of this. 
And you see them just triaging all the wounded soldiers and helping out. And uh, Kyoga's like, everyone is seeing parallels between these people and the legends. Yeah, listen closely, Kyoga. The Crimson Dragon King is a dragon of fire. We, the fire tribe, are a proud people who share the lineage of a god. It's like everything Father said was a lie. Despite that, you know, people's adoration of crimson hair and dragon warriors burns deep in their hearts. Will it ever fade? And I think it's back, we've sworn to serve another master. You have General, we finished interrogating the enemies we captured. It's like, who's behind this? Is it Sen Province? It's like, no, it's a warlord from farther north. It's like, what happened to Rihazara? It's like, his control of Sen Province meant the fire tribe was never an easy target. And he has, take me to the prisoners, I'll question them myself. Do you have a yes, sir? It's like, if I don't inform King Suon, everything will. And Riri goes, Your Majesty, I have two simple questions for you. I have an O? Oh? It's like, first, you haven't asked me to leave in a while, have you? He's like, why would I ask the Water Tribe Chief's beloved daughter to leave? It's like, sounds fishy to me. It's like, second, don't you have any bodyguards? It's like, certainly. See over there? It's like, those are palace guards. I meant a personal bodyguard. What about General Judo? And uh, Suwon goes, General Judo commands the Sky Tribe Army. He's busy enough without minding me. It's like, do you seriously mean you just wander around the palace by yourself? That's so careless. What if I were an assassin? He's like, <laughs> no assassin would reveal her thoughts so as readily as you. And she's like, what are you suggesting? And he just, uh, as she's doing that, he just like gathers her into an embrace. He goes, there's nothing to worry about. We're just playing around. And you see some shadows just kind of like easing back into, uh, behind like the statues and stuff where they're hiding. And, uh, Suwon goes, this is Hiryu Palace. Please be more cautious. And Riri's like, they're ready to kill me. It's like, those are the bodyguards you asked about. They usually keep their distance and guard the area around me. It's like, so you do have some. I'm surprised they've left me alone all this time. He goes, it's because they think we're lovers. And she's like, they what? It's like, the palace's people welcome your presence. They think you could become queen. He's like, but other than who my father is, why would they welcome me in particular? There are plenty of women in the palace. It's like, actually, I haven't seen many women near you, have I? You don't seem to let the ladies of your court get too close. It's General Judo and Advisor Kei Shuk who always seem to be at your side. Do your interests lie elsewhere? He's like, such as? He's like, the thing is, many people suspect exactly that, which is why they're so pleased that you're here. <laughs> She's just laughing. He's like, they're just relieved you're not betting a dude. It's like, you're laughing too hard. So to return to your first question, my spending so much time with you means people have stopped pushing the subject of marriage for the moment. Your presence is convenient for me. She's like, so, I'm your windbreak? It's like, the people of the palace are rather complicated, but you're straightforward and eager to, easier to deal with. It's like, I choose to take that as a compliment. It's like, no one's seriously expecting us to get married, are they? It's like, at some point, some had the rash opinion that anyone would do. It's like, how suspicious were they? However, I have good relationship with the Water Tribe, so taking you as queen is of no benefit to me. I was like, that's refreshingly blunt. It's like, well, what about a princess of another nation? Maybe Princess Korra or Princess Tao from Xing? It's like, they're both attractive in different ways. And he goes, Princess Korra ascended to the throne just the other day. That would be one way to strengthen ties with Xing, but I can't imagine she'd agree. And Riri's like, he says that, but he doesn't seem terribly interested. I wonder if he's holding out for someone better. Since he's king, that makes sense. Marriage isn't all about how it benefits you personally. That aside, he really doesn't seem interested in women. I can see why people are speculating. He doesn't spend his time on religion or women. When he engages in diplomacy, he achieves bargains that benefit the nation. He's an ideal king, isn't he? But I can't help having mixed feelings when I think about Yona. And Jav, your majesty, we've received an urgent report from the fire tribe. This case shook walks up. And he goes, still here, Lady Riri? It's like, I was just having a nice chat with His Majesty. I'll be leaving soon. And he says, I think it would be best if you returned to Suiko Palace if possible. And Suwon's like, ah, but I asked her to stay. Advisor Keishuk, let's speak in your office. And he goes, please hurry. And Riri's like, he's the one person who doesn't seem to welcome my presence at all. It makes sense. I'm close friends with Yona and I've heard the soldiers talking about how His Majesty and his people drove her from the palace. It's not that I don't understand why Suwon seized power, but I'm also Yona's ally. 
Those things look incompatible. And you see Keishuk asking, How long do you plan for Lady Riri to stay? Her influence on you is regrettable. The next time she speaks out, she should be removed. And uh, Suwon's like, Surely it's better to have her here where we can watch her rather than her having her speak out elsewhere. He's like, There's nothing to worry about. I have a grasp on her behavior. She won't have much influence even if we let her wander freely. And you see in the advisor's room, is a Kai Empire forces invaded Fire Tribe territory. And he's like, Yes, we received a report personally written by General Kyoga. This time there is no inv question that an invasion occurred. General Kyoga says he was able to repel the invading force. However, the force, that force wasn't sent by Ri Hazara of Sen Province, but rather by Ying Kulbo, a northern warlord. And Suwon's a Kulbo is a former nomad who's been gaining influence recently. Has he conquered Ri Hazara's city? Or perhaps they've joined forces. And Kei Shook's like, it's as you feared, your majesty. North Kai is in chaos and is descending into feudalism. Emperor's for power is weakened, thankfully, but that means that warlords who have gained power are trying to expand into Koka. This is precisely why it's imperative that we turn the nations of Sei and Sheng into subject states. It's like fortify security near the border immediately. You have yes, sir. You have your Majesty. One more thing. During the battle, Princess Yona and former General Huck appeared and assisted the Fire Tribe army. They were accompanied by individuals with strange powers. Those people call themselves the Four Dragon Warriors and use their abilities to mow down Ying Kolbo's troops. The reports say that they were a key factor in the Fire Tribe's victory. What are your thoughts on this? And you see Keishuk just kind of watching him. And he goes, if they provide assistance, I fail to see the problem. So the Dragon Warriors are heavenly servants from the legend of our nation's founding. One of my subordinates has been investigating. All across the kingdom, there are rumors about the four dragons at Princess Yona's sides. Every appearance is dramatic, is dramatic and sways the hearts of the people. There are stories of them stepping in during the illegal trafficking in Awa, the Fire Tribe's Rebellion, the Nadai problem in the Water Tribe, the battle with the two forts in Sei, the internal strife in Shing, and now in this most recent battle, a red-haired girl and four dragons just like the gods and the legends. Is, aren't those just stories? I've never seen their powers myself, but regardless, the real problem here is in the hearts of the people telling these tales. King Suwon, someone is being hailed as the god of our nation, and it isn't you. And you see back with the fire tribe, Yona's just like, phew, as she's helped like finish abandoning up the soldiers. And Yona's like, Yona, you should rest a little. So like, thanks, I will. I was planning to leave quickly, but it doesn't seem like we're able to do that anymore. And you're, oh, red hair! He just kind of puts the hood up to get some anonymous. So like, I suppose I am a little tired. And you see later she's just kind of resting up against one of the trees, falling asleep. And Huck sits down next to her to keep her company. Uh, yeah, I'm not going through the bonus chapter stuff because that's extraneous. Uh, so, uh, quick thoughts on this volume. I like the way I had a little cool down here for the dragons to kind of relax, recover, uh, all that. I love that even after the confession, Huck is just so, like, in denial about the idea that Yona might have any kind of affection or relationship with him. That he's just kind of, like, you know, is, like, just completely missing, like, all the signals. Just thinks he's, you know, being weird uh, and just, like, avoiding him uh, for reasons he's not picking up on the fact that she has feelings for him. Uh, that was really, really, really amusing. Uh, I like that Riri's apparently having more of a presence now. Is getting more uh, involved with uh, the main plot. I will say the Kyoga stuff felt a little bit too ham-handed and like badly paced. Like the, again, the transition from you know him talking about like oh you know I regret having not done anything uh, with uh, you know our father's rebelling or like trying to stop him immediately transitioning to them like being in the middle of the battle of the Kai Empire was too abrupt like it didn't really flow together as well as it should have and again like it feels like the entire skirmish they had with the Kai Empire feels uh, felt a little bit too manufactured for Kyoga to kind of see like the influence that Yona's having like how she doesn't really have any aspirations uh, to be you know a ruler as she's just like you know trying to help 
out of the goodness of our heart. It felt a little bit too manufactured to like have set up like a little conflict between them and have uh, her meet with Kyoga like for him to learn about uh, all the plot conveniences. So that was kind of just a little bit of a letdown and a bummer. Uh, I think the interesting uh, parts of this volume is kind of now more of the emphasis on kind of the idea of like, you know, the divine right to rule and the uh, providence and all that. And also the idea of the dragon warriors basically being treated almost like WMDs at this point. Because we know, we've seen like how frighteningly capable they are. We saw in the conflict with uh, Shang how people are, you know, like kind of crave, have an adoration and crave their power, like or trying to like see, find ways to like uh, harness it for themselves. So I'd be interested in seeing if that's going to become a further plot point or development, if that's part of the reason why the Kai Empire is invading them is because they've heard these rumors and they want to try to harness uh, the powers of the dragons for themselves. Uh, so that could be a potentially interesting development is how Yona kind of reckons with how the more notorious the dragon warriors and she become, like even if she doesn't have a desire to become princess again or if she doesn't know what she wants to do right now, how her rising profile is going to make her uh, more of a target. Uh, so I'm hoping this leads to some development with her and the other dragon warriors kind of trying to think about or at least decide or discover, you know, what they want to do with their lives, like what their aims are, what their goals are, what they're going to try to do with the rest of their lives, like what are they going to do with the dragon powers, uh, things like that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any development on that end. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like we're finally getting into conflict with the Kai Empire. Like I mentioned in a couple of the other videos, I kind of had to go back to see how well established this entire conflict has been because I feel like again this has been like part of the weakest part of the last couple of chapters have been how the conflicts have been set up uh, or I feel like I need to revisit some of the earlier stuff before I kind of uh, cement my thoughts with regards to that uh, but we'll see I'm also curious how it's going to play out with the contrast between uh, between Suwon who I think is trying to make uh trying to make Koka depend self-sufficient rather than dependent on, you know, divine powers uh, to be able to, pr to protect itself. So I'm interested in how that conflict is going to play out with Yona as well. Uh, but like I said, we'll see how that plays out with the Kai Empire stuff. Uh, so like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm going to try. I think my throat is doing okay, so I'll probably got to get to another volume of Yona uh, today as well, but that'll probably be it. Uh, so I'll get back to regularly scheduled read-through stuff next weekend. So by then, I'll probably try to do uh, the two volumes a day like I've been doing for the last little while. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, I'm hoping this arc delivers a little bit better and reads a little bit better than the last one did. Uh, but we'll see how that plays out as well. Uh, like I mentioned at the start, as always, if you like my content, please do consider like, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Uh, until next time, this is Ash. I will talk to you all later.